Hi guys, it's been a very long time since I've posted a, a video on YouTube, but uh, there's a reason why I'm posting one today, and it's because of this Ryobi OnePlus cordless soldering iron. And this has been in the States for a little while now. They have this model and a slightly bigger uh, soldering iron station model that runs off the OnePlus battery range. And I've been waiting for it for a few months ever since I found out that it was available. And it looks like it's only just come available now in April 2019 here in Australia. So here's a 4 amp battery from the Uriobi OnePlus range. And the specifications that are given for this model of soldering iron that it runs on the 18 volt platform 40 watts 480 degrees centigrade which is fairly decent if it does get there as a lot of the soldering stations that are available only get up to about 400 to 450 degrees so kudos if it gets that high the interesting thing is it takes about 60 seconds to get up to its temperature and it claims a 200 minute runtime on a 5 amp battery. So obviously on a 4 amp battery, it's going to be a little bit less. And maybe on this particular model, it's had a bit of use. As you can see, it might run a little bit lower than its true 4 amp hour stated time. But there's no reason why I shouldn't be able to get at least 2 hours of runtime out of it. Which is plenty of time when you're out in the field and uh, needing to do a little bit of work where it's impractical to bring a cable unit out because you either don't have AC power or you don't want to be running continual extension leads to, uh, to that area that you're working. Um, there's a few areas that I plan to use this for in uh, warehouses and uh, in various other environments and it will be perfect. It also, looking at the box, uses the battery as a stand for the unit and it has that uh, coiled wand holder uh, which makes it easy for you to place it down without having to worry about letting it sit on uh, either on something that could burn or potentially getting your hand caught on it and burning yourself. So looks like they've done a very nice job packaging it together and interestingly on the website it was claiming it was around about 1.1 kilogram or that might have been on the retailer's website but according to the box it says the net weight is 350 grams and that kind of feels like it's accurate because it doesn't feel terribly heavy in fact the battery feels heavier than the unit itself so we're going to unbox it and we're going to try and put it to a test. I've got a piece of 12 gauge uh, cable here and we're going to see how well it operates uh, trying to uh, solder together a piece of 12 gauge uh, cable. Okay so after unboxing it we've got the main unit. It comes with a chisel tip some chintzy uh, solder there which I'm just going to go put straight in the bin. The instruction manual which is about as useless as because anyone who buys a soldering iron should know how to use one. The unit itself comes with a button to turn it on and off and an indicator which looks like when it's blinking it's getting up to temperature and when it's solid it's hit its temperature. Overall the quality of the unit doesn't feel too bad. The plastic I don't think is glass fiber. It doesn't appear to have that glass fiber look about it. I could be wrong but because the heat off the soldering iron is fairly far detached from Plastic's probably not going to hurt it too much. And the fit and finish isn't phenomenal by any standards, but it doesn't look to be too bad either. 
it's uh, not designed to be a as mobile as a inline pen style a gas powered unit um, or as a one of those 3.6 volt lithium ion uh, cordless ones but this will probably deliver a lot more temperature and a lot more runtime than one of those little either USB or 3.6 volt uh, units. The wand actually feels really good though and um, the molding on here is similar to what they put on their cordless tools. Um, this looks like it uses that new style um, of butylene over mold that they use on their new cordless drills and uh, it feels really good especially for a soldering iron where you're typically used to really hard plastics this has got a really positive feel to it um, the tip itself doesn't appear to be anything too spectacular it just looks like a normal tip but it's got a really nice weight to it uh, there's definitely glass fiber in the uh, in this handle here where it connects to the tip for the uh, plastics and um, overall it's just got just the right, what feels like the right amount of weight to be able to have a positive uh, utility to it so we'll put that back on there and we're gonna fit the battery and we're gonna run some tests so the battery's in and for the benefits of the video I've not bothered to charge it up fully. So this battery happens to be half charged. It's been used for various other tasks and it will give us a good idea as to how versatile this unit is, especially if you've only got one battery in your kit. I've got about five of these four amp batteries, but at the end of the day, you don't wanna be carrying around an entire lot of batteries because then it's no longer a portable device. So we will just hit that start button and it begins flashing. I do have my watch measuring this to see how long it will take. So the lights go on solid green and it actually looks like it was less than 60 seconds. It was probably closer to about 45 to 50 seconds. So that is a pretty good effort, assuming that it is accurately reading its temperatures and assuming that it is definitely operating at 480 degrees. Unfortunately, I don't have my infrared therm uh, thermometer with me. So not going to be able to tell today. Now, obviously the voltage drop is going to be substantial, so it's dropped a bar. That could just be as well because it was on the on the cusp of dropping down to one bar already, so I doubt that that's been caused by one minute's worth of use on this soldering iron, but we're going to start using it in a second. So I'm just going to set it up and uh, we'll see how it runs. All right, so just to set up now and to tell you just how amateur this really is, my setup, because I don't have a proper stand, I'm gonna try and do this one-handed with the camera and try and connect it all together. As you can see, it does a pretty good job quickly uh, melting the soldering, the solder. There's no waiting there. And we'll see how long it takes for it to generate enough heat on the cable to uh, then start melting it all together. I'm going to put the camera down just for a second and then start doing uh, running with two hands just to see how quick and how long it takes to, uh, to do it properly. Alright guys, so sorry that I couldn't show you how it operated when I was doing this. Now this is by no means a, a professional or a completed job. However, it has managed to fuse together and solder the two wires. Uh, with a bit more time, I'd probably be able to do it a lot cleaner, maybe use a little bit of flux as well. Um, and in fairness, it didn't do a great job, but that's because it's 12 gauge, probably gonna be a 
bit too big for um, a cable gauge for, for this type of unit if you were to do it all day long. But certainly if this is all you had to do, if you had one of these types of cables that you had to solder together um, amongst other smaller cables and it was just a one-off thing and you weren't having to do it all day long, that would be more than acceptable. And uh, the unit itself is still operating nicely. And I wonder if the voltage has restored. No, it's still down to one bar. But overall, it seems to be doing the job. And if I spend a little bit more time on the join, I'm sure I would be able to get it to work properly and uh, to solder properly. And if I had an actual uh, clamp, a proper clamp to do it and hold the camera at the same time, I'm sure it would look a million times better. But overall, for what I need it for, it's done its job and it's done a fairly good job of it, even though it took a little while on a thicker gauge. So I'm sure on smaller cables, it wouldn't pose any problems. Uh, it comes with a larger tip. Perhaps again, if I had the larger tip on there, it might do a better job. But overall, I like the finer tip, especially because it gives you a little bit more um, ability to do smaller, more delicate work. Uh, especially when you're doing things like PCBs. Uh, that tip's probably still a little bit too bit, uh, thick for a PCB, but overall, it would probably do the job just fine on basic PCB work. And the fact that I can take this, put it in my tool bag with a couple of batteries means that I've got hours worth of uh, runtime without a hitch. I find it comical though that they have these little, little label warnings careful that it's hot obviously you're buying a soldering iron if you uh didn't know by that stage that it was going to be hot you probably um should just give up but overall for i think it was about 60 65 dollars which i think in america they sell for about 35 us dollars so the australia tax is probably about right and um it's really hard to complain for the value of that so that you can integrate it into your OnePlus system. And uh, I think they've done a pretty good job on the overall package. It gets probably about a seven in my book overall for its build and feel and ease of use and the quality of the work that it does. So I'm pretty excited to uh, keep using this and I hope this has been helpful to you if you're interested in buying it.